Hi, thanks for joining me. I am Tammy. I am a creator and I recently purchased an X2 M1 laser cutter. This is my second video. Um, I just wanted to let you guys get to know me a little bit. I have no laser experience. I decided I needed a laser cutter to do some of my decorative signs that I do for my business. And um, I love the machine. It is amazing. I looked at many alternatives. This one did everything that I wanted and more. And it was in my price range. And I've had nothing but good experience with this machine. I even had a problem with my machine, but the company was quick to send me a new machine and correct it. So I've been very happy all around and I highly recommend this machine. And let's go ahead and get started on the project. So what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to take a graphic from Canva and we're going to... Um, actually export it in two different formats so that we can um, let it automatically do the SVG tracing for us and we're manually going to do it too just to show you how you can do it either way. Let's go ahead and get started so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay I'm over here in Canva. I personally have a pro account. Um, you also can get a free account. You're just limited on the items that you can download without a watermark if you have the free account or you can pay per item. So they usually average about a dollar per item, which might be a good way to get started to see if you really want to use this on a monthly basis. Um, anything with this crown next to it is uh, pro content. So that means you would pay for it or you would have to have the monthly plan. Okay. But there are lots of free options in here, just not for the ornament that we're going to make today. Okay. So I need to start off with some kind of a working surface. There's tons of templates in here, but we don't need that for what we're doing today. I'm just going to create a blank document. And since I'm in my pro account, I could resize this at any time. See the little crown next to the resize. That means it's a paid option to do this. Okay, so I am going to go to elements now and I am going to search reindeer ornament. And I found this just searching different terms to try to come up with some designs that I could be working on. Okay, so here's a bunch of different options here. Some of these um, items have action to them too, um, so movement. So those aren't going to work for our purposes, but let's scroll down here. Okay, this is the item that I per previously used that I want to show you. So let's go ahead. This is a pro option. The other thing I want to show you if you're designing to resell the SVGs is that you want to take into consideration what the license is for this. So if you click here, it will tell you a little bit more about the item, um, about the license attached to it. You just hit the I here to get more details um, on how you can use this and distribute it. Okay. Then the cool thing about Canva is once it sees what I like, it will suggest a bunch of items that are similar. So I can open this and then we can see all of these other ornaments that are available to us. Isn't that cool? Okay, we're going to go ahead and, and work with this ornament right here. Now, the other new thing that Canvas had recently is you can actually export an SVG file. So they'll do their best to try to make it SVG compliant. Um, doesn't always work perfectly, but it sometimes is a good start. Or you can just send it out as a, a graphic. Um, my format I usually use is PNG, and then we can do the actual SVG part in um, Xtool uh, Creative Space. So let's go ahead and do it both ways just so I can show you this. So let's type in, I'm going to rename this so I can find it. Reindeer ornaments. And I'm going to do one. Uh, first one we'll do is SVG. And the second one we'll do is PNG. Okay. So this is basically ready to go because remember, it's just going to use the outline of this item. So we can go ahead and export it as is. And I am going to download it. 
And then here we have a PNG option, or if I open it up, we have an SVG option. Again, you'll see the crown next to it, which means it's a paid feature to do the SVG. You don't need to do an SVG. We can also do that. We'll do it also in the um, software for Xtool. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it first as a PNG. And then we'll go ahead and download it as an SVG. So just so I can show you the difference. Okay, so we are done here in Canva. Let's go ahead and switch over to Xtool. Now we are in the Xtool creative space. I have already downloaded my graphic PNG file. Um, you can import yours by going to file, import image, or over here on the left-hand side, image. You also um, use import image to import any SVG files. The only projects that this application will open are um, files that Xtool creates, which has an XCS extension on them. Okay, we need to remove this background so we can outline just the um, ornament. If we outline this now, it's going to outline the background here. So let's go ahead and to edit image. Three tools here. There is the magic wand, which is controlled by the fuzziness here as far as what detail you're going to get. The, there is the um, eraser, which is also controlled down here by the size of it. And then there's the crop tool, which lets you just remove maybe a section of a graphic that you want to use. We're going to go back to the magic wand to remove the background. Okay, we also have to do the inside so that we see the checkered space behind all of this ornament. If we would hit the black space by mistake, um, our design would go away. We would just go up in here and hit my favorite button, the undo button, and we'll be fine. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and save this. Once we save it, it doesn't actually save the file to your computer. It actually just saves it to put it back into the workspace. Okay, and we're gonna outline this. Now, before we do this, we might wanna look at the size of this design and make sure that we are happy with it. Um, this is in millimeters right now. To change that to inches, I'm gonna go to settings. I'm gonna switch to inches. And I really want this about three and a half inches. And I wanna make sure before I move this that this is locked so that the, the dimension stays in proportion. If that's unlocked, I could skew the image. I'm gonna go down to about three and a half-ish. Okay, I'm happy with that. And I could do this um, after I also outline it just to do the outline portion. It's fine either way. Let's go ahead and do the outline now. The default here is um, two millimeters. I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to millimeters now. You don't have to save these settings, you just close the box. Okay, let's do outline again. I'm gonna go down to one millimeter because I'm kind of concerned about the size of this hole and whether it's actually going to be able to hold a string. So let's go down to one or I could even go down to zero and have it be a tight fit. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and go down to, I think one will be fine. Okay, then we just go ahead and hit okay to save our work. If you don't hit okay, that outline will go away. We have two elements here now. We have the outline and we have the background. I'm gonna move the outline over and I always check for floaties, especially on a more detailed graphic, um, but we're fine. So we can go ahead and get rid of our um, graphic. Now at this point, we wanna start thinking about that we wanna save this file, but let's go ahead and set our cut settings before we do that. So those are saved also. So we have 2.8 for thickness. We have, uh, we're gonna do it on a triangular prism. We're gonna do power of 100. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to be uncut first. Be careful you do that. You wanna make sure your button that you want to, um, actually the function you want to perform is actually highlighted here. So we're on cut. Now I wanna do 105, okay? 
Now, if you, for some reason, don't want to do this function and maybe you just want to score the first time and do like an outline on the inside, you would make sure you could just go ahead and turn off this output if you felt like it would cut first, maybe. Um, but this is just a toggle to perform or not perform this function. OK, we want to go ahead and perform it and then we can go ahead and hit process. I actually need to turn my machine on, so give me one moment. Now, at this point where that is getting ready, I want to go ahead and save this file because if anything would happen in the process of cutting it, I just saves me from perhaps losing the file. So I'm going to do file and save as, and then I'll just pick a name and where I want to save it on my computer. Okay. We'll just pretend I finished that step. <laughs> Okay, my machine is warming up. Now let me just talk to you real quick about how I connect to my machine. So when I'm actually doing any cuts, I prefer to connect USB. I just don't wanna rely on my Wi-Fi to be operational because sometimes my Wi-Fi gets a little glitchy. Um, I only use really Wi-Fi when I maybe want to work on placement of some items and I wanna sit in the house and work. Um, and my machine is in the garage. So that's when I will come turn the machine on and use my Wi-Fi and put my wood in there and place it. Okay, I am gonna connect via USB. Oops, and I need to select my machine. Okay, it's loading the image right now and we are loaded, okay. So we can go ahead and place this and hit process. Okay, now framing is something you do when you wanna make sure that your um, project is going to fit on the wood. I'm really not concerned about it right now because it's a blank piece of wood that I haven't used. It's not a restricted area and you'll get more comfortable. But when you first start out, please go ahead and frame watch it frame, make sure you're happy with the placement and then do your cut. So if I go and hit my machine button now before I hit start, I am going to get an error. And I sometimes have to back up to the last step and come back in again to do this and make it work correctly. So always hit this start button first and then wait till you see in the background here where it says sending file succeeded and then you can hit the button on your machine. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start our cut. Okay, I've started the cutting. You always want to be sure to stay next to your machine while it's cutting. Just to make sure you don't have any flare-ups with the wood burning. Um, don't leave your machine as operational. We'll let it cut here for a second and then we'll stop and come back to it when it is close to being done. Okay. Now it's coming around to do the last circle to finish the cut. I enjoy watching the laser cut and I've noticed that sometimes I can see a light through the bottom of the cut. It's, that's kind of a good way to know that it's actually cutting all the way through, especially if you're using a smaller, uh, thinner piece of wood. Okay, the last little bit. Just the top part left to do. And we are done. Okay, let's go ahead and pull it out. I'm just going to grab the ornament here to show you and pop the pieces out. I just work them back and forth from the bottom to the top until they come out. And then we do have to do the circle at the top as well. Okay, and there you go. That's it. Let's go ahead and go back to Canva and take a look at how this file would have imported as an SVG file instead of as a PNG file as well. Okay, guys, now we're going to come back here and we're going to actually import the SVG version to show you how that would work.
Okay, and it's going to ask me if I want to scale this to the canvas, and I will say yes. Okay, and you can see this is already all outlined. Now you do get these boxes around this because this was the size of your work surface, but we don't want that. So we're just gonna go ahead and click that. It takes a few times of deleting it to have it totally go away, but that's fine. We'll just keep clicking, hitting the delete button. And that's it. Now we're just left with the ornament. And this is all set already. We just need to configure it to cut. We're gonna go check our parameters. We're going to switch to cut and then 100 and 5 and 1. And then we go ahead and hit process and then we'll go to the machine. We've already cut it out, so we don't need to do this again. But I just wanted to show you how you could do it with the actual SVG file and save yourself this, the step on the outline itself. Okay, thank you guys so much for um, watching. If you like this video, please hit like. And if you would like to be notified when new videos come out, please hit subscribe and have a blessed day.